All right, here's the deal. I uh, put a quick post up on Facebook. I've got yard work to do today. Um, plus, factor in that I just got my brand new hammock from Dutchware. I got a chameleon. Okay, so here's my options. I can stay home and do yard work. My grass is like, or I can go out and have fun. Okay, I've decided that I'm going to go ahead and kill a couple of birds uh, with one stone. I'm supposed to be doing some what's in my pack videos and a review video. And yeah, you know the drill. So I'm packing. Why not do a what's in my pack video right now? And you're going to see exactly what I'm going to be taking on this trip. So I'll kind of probably release this as two videos, but it's all going to be one day. So let's start out with food this is what i'm going to be bringing it's kind of overkill probably too much i always do that i always bring too much food but hey here's what we've got uh, two mountain house dinners uh we got the chicken and dumplings and my absolute favorite in the entire world beef stew i think that tastes like a beef pot pie so two dinners uh i got the breakfast skillet it's kind of big for me in the morning. I'm not much of a breakfast eater, so I got one. I split it into two packages and was even smart enough to write down for once how much water I need. Um, so there's breakfast. There's dinner for two days. Ooh, let's not forget the important part of breakfast. I got some Nescafe instant coffee that I brought along. Um, lunches. I got a snack for each day. Atkins bar one day. RX bar. These are new to me, but I'm really liking them. They're pretty good, actually. They taste like, well, real food. Um, this is going to be lunch today. I'm kind of really getting into these, especially with all the new flavors that we're finally getting here in West Virginia. It's the uh, little individual tuna packets. You just tear it open. I like to add it into a tortilla. So that's lunch today, two tortillas. Two tunas. And then I've got the same thing for tomorrow. And I actually have a couple of extra tortillas in there because I like to do my breakfast skillets. The breakfast burrito style. But there you go, food. Um, Jack, he's pretty simple. He eats kibbles. I'm going to put a day's worth of kibbles in one Ziploc and another day's worth of kibbles in another Ziploc. And well, that'll take care of Jack. Pretty simple, just scoop it out of there and into a couple of Ziplocs and BAM! Dog food taken care of. The other few things that will be going in the food bag, coincidentally this is it, it is a dry bag. I'll be taking my new cook kit, um, same stove I finally broke down and spent the money and got one of these Tokes titanium guys. I'm glad I did, it's there in the mesh bag. This is my whole cook kit. We'll get into that at camp. Um, basically though, we've got an alcohol stove, windscreen, a uh, little gripper, and a uh, Tokes 550 mil little cup and lid, which will act as my cooked set, along with the Tokes spoon. I don't like the rough edge. It tastes weird. They do make the one with the polished, just like a regular spoon at home. Good deal, this thing weighs next to nothing. And I don't know, it goes together in my book, but I carry my toothbrush, paste, and a little bit of floss and a block, and I keep that in the food bag. That pretty much takes care of the food for this weekend. Uh, it doesn't change a lot on really from trip to trip, except for how many days, you know? Add more meals, more coffee, more snacks. That's about it. So, uh, Let's keep moving on and get to the next little segment. And one other thing in my food, and just two days worth of a multivitamin, some fish oil I'm taking for my joints because I'm old and achy. But yeah, no big deal, I'm just a little mini Ziploc. One thing though, before we get out of here, one thing I do like to do different is I don't like to get into the food bag except you know 
at night when I'm at camp or in the morning when I'm at camp before I take off. But during the day I'm hiking, I never get into that thing. It's just a pain in the butt. I don't even like to take my pack off. I will when I take a break, I'll take it off, but I don't like to really get into it. Anything I need during the day, I keep on the outside, including lunch. That's the one meal I'm gonna eat on the day on the trail. So I put it in its own little self-contained Ziploc. And that stays on the outside pouch of my pack. Really easy to get into. No big deal. Just wanted to mention that. Okay, for everybody that's fixated on weights and numbers and all that stuff, I mean, I'm not so much particularly, but all the food in the dry bag, we took out the toothbrush and the cook kit. But uh, total for food for two days, I usually plan on a pound a day. We have two pounds and seven tenths of an ounce. So, 32, almost 33 ounces. So I'm about right on target for food. If you took out the dry bag, I'm sure that'd be right. But we're taking the dry bag, so... That's part of it, so there we go. That's wait for that. Alright, let's take that off of there. Go through this mess. Cook it with the bag, all that stuff. 4.1. Huh. Well, that's not bad for a stove and a pot and all the accessories and the bag it comes in. Oh, sorry. Four ounces. Let's not forget the spoon. 4.8. And the toothbrush. Alright, so my cook kit with my stove and my toothbrush and stuff. 5.5 yeah. 5 ounces. Not too bad. Considering that, uh, a lot of people's pot weighs more than that, not counting their stove and other stuff. Good job, Dave. All right, we're gonna take that stuff and put it in there now. Cannot do that one-handed and hold the camera. So we're gonna throw that in there real quick. All right, there we go. Everything's up in there. Food kit, done. Up next, shelter system. Right here, we got the brand spanky new Dutchware Chameleon. Hexon 1.0. I got this with the bug net. We're not gonna go into too much detail right now because I am doing an initial review on this guy. Uh, I'll just tell you that it weighs in at 17.1 ounces. And that's with the bug net and the bag it's in. And the ridge line and the drip lines and everything, man. Um, I also have a homemade uh, Cuban Dyneema fiber ridge line organizer in there that the wife made up for me. So that's that heck of a difference between a, that and a three and a half pound tent. Next up, I've got my tarp right over here. Uh, this is the bag I keep it in at home. I won't be bringing this on the trip. Um, just as a general practice, even though it, it's not supposed to rain, um, you still get condensation and dew on your tarp in the morning. So what I've got here is an 11 foot. This is a Sil Poly uh, 11 foot tarp. I cannot remember the name of the brand. I'll have to ask Chipmunk and just put a title up here. Um, but this thing, even though it's sil poly, it's super, super light. Um, it's 11 foot. They usually range in to the uh, somewhere between 12 to 16 ounces range. This guy, with the snake skins that it's kept in, and the continuous ridge line is like 10 ounces. It's really unbelievable light for a sil poly. That's why I've been kind of holding off on the Cuban fiber, that and price, because I'm a cheapskate. 
Um, I've got like a 25 foot continuous ridge line holding it together. And I just like to carry it in snake skins and I carry it in the back mesh of my pack. That way, you know, when it's wet, if I keep it in there, it's just gonna stay wet all day. I keep it like this in the back mesh pocket of my pack and it will air out a little bit during the day. Um, but I've got that whole big bundle there, 10.1 ounces. And then right over here, I've got another one of these little Cuban Dyneema fiber. It's what that little guy's stuff sack's made out of. Once again, the chipmunk made that for me. Custom, uh, and that will hold my tent stakes. I got four of them right here. I actually stole these out of my Nemo tent and uh, I already had the lines wrapped around them. I'm just OCD, I like to do that. And down on the bottom, I'll show these a little better because I don't want to pull them out right now, but I've got the hook worms for attaching it to the tarp. They're pretty cool, they work really well. Um, my only problems with them is if you did have gloves on, you're not gonna be able to do the little knot thing and I'll show that later on setup on a trip video. But I have actually just ordered some of the fleas, so I'll be replacing that. But anyway, those go in there, and that is the shelter system. By comparison, this whole thing, you know, we're talking about a pound, under a pound, we're talking two pounds. My tent was like three and a half. If you didn't count the ground cloth, so this is going big ways towards dropping my base weight. And even more importantly, it's just more comfortable. But we won't get into that now. I'll save that rant for when I'm actually laying in the hammock out on the trail. Sorry, I did forget one little thing. Uh, the suspension for the hammock. This is weighing in at 6.3 ounces. I got two, the 15 foot spider straps. This also has Cuban involved in the process. Um, I'm not gonna pull them out now, I'll show you at camp. But what I did get, uh, instead of the, I got the sewn on Dutch clip, so I don't even have to mess with that. It's already fixed at the end. And I was gonna go with the beetle buckle, but he's got a new guy buried in there it's actually just a little bit lighter and i believe easier to use my wife's got the beetle buckle system but uh yeah i'm going with this new guy so there we go and yet another custom bag made by the chipmunk how cool to have a wife that says all righty next up in the equation We've got sleeping system. Brand spanky new. Hasn't been played. Well, it's been played with. I haven't spent the night with it yet. Hammock gear. This is the 30 degree Econ incubator. This is my under quilt. Uh, Chipmunk helped me get her all dialed in. I think I've got it pretty much good to go. Clip and all should be pretty well set. This is the full length. I forget the weight, but I'll put it up here. Pretty freaking light. Uh, under 150 bucks. Um, they are having a spring sale. I was able to participate in that and get 10% off. Um, pretty quick turnaround time too i was kind of bummed when i found out it was going to take me five to six weeks to get it in three and a half thank you hammock gear i am waiting on a matching burrow top quilt that i just ordered that should be coming in here in the next couple weeks which will enable me to get rid of this guy this is my old sleeping bag it's a 40 degree it's synthetic it's heavy actually it's not too bad it's two pounds for a 40 degree bag that's of synthetic, that's really not too horrid. But that's gonna be my sleep system tonight. That's what I'm gonna go with. Uh, that will get, be getting replaced very soon with a matching one of those, also in black on black. Um, and then I've got a little dry bag that each of them stuff into. 
and that will go down into the very bottom of my pack. Of course, this is always the fun part. One of the great things about Dale now is it will compress really, really well. Well, it looks like I'm wrestling with this thing. It's actually not too horrid. And let's get her stuff down. I used to be a big believer in the compression sack. Uh, but to be honest with you, after working in whitewater for years and years and decades, having to deal with dry bags if you actually stuff these guys right you don't need a compression sack this guy compresses you're not going to get it much smaller with compression sack this is dry it's way way lighter because you don't have all the straps and buckles just learn how to roll up a dry bag right that's really the easiest and lightest way to go all right, let's see what we got here. Turn it on. Let it zero. Sleeping bag. One pound, 13.8 ounces. Okay, with the bag, so it is under two. Under quilt with the bag. One pound, 6.6. .6. There we go. So, sleeping system is definitely going to be under three pounds. Nice. Find me a 30 degree sleeping bag, three pounds for a couple hundred bucks. Good luck. All right, next up, we got the paper kit. Mine's not real complicated. Toilet paper. And some wet wipes and a little Ziploc. There you go, pure and simple. This generally stays on the outside of the pack. It doesn't get buried on the inside. You want this guy quick access. You never want to have to worry about finding your mountain money. All right, next up on the list is the water filter kit. Uh, we just got a Sawyer bag there for my dirty water bag. A lot of people complain about these. I've never had a problem. If you're popping them, quit squeezing so hard, you know? It's not that big a deal. I've never had one of these break out on me yet, though. They always get funky, and I throw them away. And not funky from the inside or bad plastic, just dirty on the outside from, well, me not cleaning them up and taking good enough care of them. Um, they're super cheap. I think they work just fine. Um, my advice is quit squeezing on them so hard. Uh, I've got a, the thinnest water bottle I could possibly, cheapest, thinnest plastic I could find. I cut the top off of it. It's just a scoop for if I'm at really shallow water, shh, pour it into the bag. Uh, this is just a little, uh, one of the fake chamois. Uh, I learned to carry one of these video boating. You always have to dry your hands off before you deal with your camera. This is the Aqua Dry brand. I'm kind of partial to them. Um, I carry a little bit of this in here. One, I wrap it around my Sawyer Squeeze, which is my filter of choice. Uh, I might be going to the micro. But this over the mini, this is the hands down winner. The flow rate is just phenomenal on it. You know, it's got like the lifetime guarantee. They don't even rate it for the 150 million gallons like some of the others. It's just lifetime. Um, this kind of keeps it from rattling around. One thing you have to worry about, though, is right down there you can see that little washer. Keep track of that thing. It will pop out. They're simple to replace. Um, when you get the Sawyer kit, they actually send you another one for if you want to set up on a gravity filter. Um, and I just took that extra filter and I threw it in my repair kit. That way, if I ever lose it... I got an extra one. This guy, though, besides to keep it rattling around, real important. 
you got to have something like this. And I, I don't see a lot of people doing this on video, and it kind of concerns me. Um, when you get your dirty water, you've got dirty water dripping. You don't want it running down this guy and getting into your water bottle and cross-contaminating your water. There's no point in filtering it if you're just going to drip dirty water down into it. So always carry something like this and wipe down your dirty water before you hook it up and start filtering or you're just shooting yourself in the foot. This all goes into another little custom made by the chipmunk mesh bag and this lives on the outside of my pack work. Super easy to get to. Water filter system done. There we go. I wrap up the Sawyer squeeze and a little chamois there. Shove her down into the plastic bottle and that that go in there go in there I say go in there there we go alrighty and then that'll live on outside pocket of my pack simple and easy to get to well, of course very important is the pack I've switched over to the Gregory Optic 48 lots of options I'm doing a review on it uh, with this configuration, this guy is two pounds and one ounce. Yeah, there's other ultralight packs out there, but I'm pretty sold on this one, at least for one season. It's more comfortable than anything I've ever worn. It's lighter than anything I've ever worn. Pretty nifty. Uh, real quick, though, without going into any kind of review, I just carry a whistle. Because I'm an ex video baiter, I believe in and I carry camera equipment. I believe in carrying an umbrella. That's the lightest one I could find. It was like six ounces. Um, one nice thing about the Gregory is they do give you a pack cover that comes with it. You don't have to pay extra for it. And that lives right here with the umbrella. And my raincoat will go down in there as well. That's all my rain gear. Uh, I'm tired of the debate. Should I get a back liner? Should I get a pack cover? Okay, it's real simple as far as I'm concerned. I don't care how good your liner is in the pack. If the outside of the pack gets wet, it gathers water. Okay, water's heavy. It's 8.8 .8 pounds per gallon. You soak up just an ounce or two of water into your pack cloth, and you're automatically weighing more than just a pack cover. So... My answer, do both. It's not that hard. Get, get a good pack cover for the outside. You don't want your pack getting wet. It gets nasty and it adds weight. And then pack liner for me, I'm going with the super ultra expensive Glad Kitchen Trash Bag. It fits perfectly inside of my pack. It works great. And I'll actually stick my pack in that at nighttime to keep it dry. Simple solution. Why debate when the answer is simply put on a pack cover and add the weight of a plastic garbage bag? We're talking grams, people. This isn't rocket science. Quit debating it. It doesn't matter. You're just going to do what you want anyway, but that's how I choose. All right, let's get busy, people. I'm burning daylight. I got to get out on the trail. We're going to start hurrying this up a little bit. Right there, itty-bitty little two-ounce bottle. This I got it at Wally World. It was just in the little travel section. It's an empty bottle. Um, I have like a half. This is a two-ounce bottle. Uh, that's like a half ounce of DEET. That is all that me and a couple of people would need for uh, five or six days. Little, weighs next to nothing. This lives in like the side hip pocket of my pack. I don't like bugs. <laughs> All right, next up, we've got this guy. This is my ditty bag. This is a little blue dry bag. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to stop for a second. So I can get the label. Outdoor research. Outdoor products. I'm sorry. Outdoor products. I got these at Wally World. It's a set of three. This is the smallest. There's a red that's a medium, and there's yellows up there, which is probably a 10 or 15 liter. Um, you get a three pack of them. This, the medium, and the yellow for 10 bucks at Wally World. I've been using them for a couple years. This is actually a really great product. 
They're durable. They stay dry. They're not as light as Cuban fiber, but they're pretty doggone light. And especially, you get all three for 10 bucks. Um, I'm a big proponent of them. They hold up and they actually stay really great dry. I've had zero issues. Anyway, this is my ditty bag. This is just what I keep all my other stuff in. And I keep this clipped right at the very top of my pack uh, where they have that little clip sometimes on the nicer packs like the Gregory for uh, hooking your water bladder up to, which I don't use. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, I have this rolled up and it's a loop and it's just clipped right there on the top of my pack so it can't fall in and go anywhere and it's just their immediate access. Um, I don't use the brain or top lid on my pack, it's just the cover. Uh, I have that option but I've gotten rid of it to get a little bit lighter. So that's how I keep this up close. Gear explosion. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. This is my repair kit, it's pretty simple. Uh, all I have is an extra lighter, some tenacious tape patch. Uh, that's that extra gasket for my Sawyer. A little itty bitty mini tube of super glue, which you can use for a million different things. Um, an extra tarp hook in case I lose one. And an extra water bottle cap. I've been doing this for years. The only other one I've seen mention that is Syntax 77. And I was like, yeah, I'm not the only one. Yeah, man, it really sucks to lose one of your water, water bottle caps while you're out on the trail, so carry a spare. You know, this is just the, the one that came off that cheapy bottle I used for my scoop. It, it's not the greatest cap in the world, but it works and it weighs nothing. So anyway, repair kit. Um, headlight, I uh, don't have a great one yet. This is just the Ever Ready. It is, however, 350 looms and it weighs 3.1 ounces with the batteries in it. Uh, a few triple A's, uh, it's got low, bright, red, uh, you can dial it in and adjust it from a spot to wide open and it's got high and low for a cheap You know headlamp. It's not the most ultralight, but for right now it's working uh, Med kit too much stuff in here to go through but basically I got some gloves a couple different bandages uh, medications anti diarrheas uh, allergies um, um, For allergic reactions and uh, I've got some Aleve in here as well, a little blood clotter, and some uh, sports glucotape. My med kit's probably a little bigger than a lot of people's, but, you know, hey, pack what you think you need. Uh, cordage, I've got my bear line in here, and I've got a clothesline. It's basically just uh, set up like a t continuous ridge line. And I set that up so I, you know, you got stuff to dry. There you go. Or you can have a little extra cordage. It's not a bad idea, uh, considering that it weighs like a quarter ounce. I'm carrying it. Uh, my beer bag is line is pretty simple. A super lightweight beaner and 50 foot of bright orange zing it. Actually 35. I cut it down. Uh, the greatest fire starter in the world, cotton ball saturated in Vaseline, works every time and unbelievably lightweight. Uh, at this point, these things are so reliable that I don't carry more than one per night that I'm wanting to make a fire. So I'm potentially going out for two nights, two cotton balls. There we go. That's the Diddy kit. Alrighty. 9.3 ounces. Yeah, I need to shave that down a little bit, but it is what it is. That's what I'm taking this trip. Alrighty, it is supposed to be getting uh, a little chilly tonight, depending on how you define chilly. Uh, low 50s, high 40s. I am going to be taking the Ghost Whisper, Mountain Hardware, Down Jacket. Let's be honest, call it Down Sweater. It's great for what it is. Um, it weighs 8 ounces. Um, I can wear a t-shirt and this guy and go down to 40 and be comfortable. More often than not though, this might become the dog's sleeping bag, we'll see. But that's going. Nice thing is, is it folds up into its own little pocket. Um, I'll probably actually keep it in a little itty bitty dry bag and that might be my pillow tonight if the dog doesn't take it. Uh, rain jacket. Yeah, I got mixed feelings even bringing this thing up. I'm taking one. Uh, I don't know if it'll do me any good or not. 
what we got here is a super expensive North Face jacket that my wife paid a ridiculous amount of money for uh, that didn't keep me dry at all. Sent it back to North Face. Normally, man, for the past 25 years, I love North Face. They've just been a great company. This time, though, man, talking about being first and goal and punting. Yeah, we sent it back to them. They said, nope, there's nothing wrong with it. Sent it back to us. Uh, I had to, to do the DW finish on it myself a few times. It's questionable. Who knows what'll work? And it's not exactly light either. This thing's almost eight ounces. I think I'm going to get frog togs like the chipmunk did, but I don't have one for this weekend, so it's on the pile. Don't buy that jacket. It's soft, it's comfy, it feels great, you think it's wonderful? Yeah, until it rains. I was so mad. Next up, the trekking poles. They're not super expensive, but they are nice, man. Uh, these are from Costco. A bunch of people were ranting about them. My wife got them. I gotta be honest, I made fun of people for decades that used trekking poles, but I was young back then. Now that I'm old, I'm really digging these things and I was ignorant. I just didn't realize how great they were. I'm gonna be uh, doing a whole video on the amazing things of trekking poles. Uh, but these are mine. Core candles, I really recommend that so you don't sweat. Uh, the little red and yellow is some Velcro because these are folders. If I wanna put them away, I gotta throw some Velcro or rubber band or something on them to keep them closed. And I've wrapped some duct tape around it, two different sizes. And what if I need to do any repairs? Right there, just peel off a little bit. So these are my trekking poles. I strongly endorse having trekking poles and they are going. One of the last things on the list is I'm gonna bring a, a half of one of these aqua dry cloths. They can just be used for so many things, a towel, camp cloth. I wrap it around and put it around the back of my neck if I'm sweating to keep sweat from running down my back. It's a million one uses. It's replaced the bandana. It weighs even less and absorbs 10 times more, and it's going. Oh, we're getting to the bottom of the list. We've got some, uh, whoo! My fuel for the alcohol stove, it's just some heat. Put in a little plastic bottle, clearly marked, so nobody drinks it. It is a medicine bottle that's used for liquids, so I know it makes a good seal, plus I've tested it. Uh, this is like six ounces. Yeah, that's more than enough fuel for three or four days. Oh, last but not least, we've got my GPS, my communicator, my way of watching movies, my backup camera, my iPhone, and it's a little waterproof case. Wow! Eight and a half ounces. Boy, you're not light. You're not light at all. But you do a lot of cool stuff and you're in the pile, you're going. One thing I can't really show you is the camera because I'm using it to film with. Uh, it's for right now, I'm converting over from a dry box, which is really tough for me. Uh, I just got this cheapy little hip sack. Well, we're not supposed to have rain, but that's what I'm gonna use. Uh, some extra SD cards, a cleaning cloth, uh, and a dry bag. That's going to go in there and be kind of carried up front, old school hip back style. I'll look so cool. Alright, about the only other thing is uh, water. I'll be carrying two of these guys, uh, one liter. Just so it's water in it. Uh, it's like the 23.7, the smaller bottle. That's what I'll throw some Gatorade or Electrolyte mix, something like that in. That's my other than water bottle. And uh, that pretty much takes care of the hydration system. I don't use a Camelback. They're just a pain in the butt. They're hard to clean. They're hard to refill. They're just a hassle and they're heavy. Light, lightweight, and it gets nasty. Get rid of it, get another one. You can find them anywhere. 
So, there we go. Alrighty, guys. I think that's about it. Yep, that's it. I am packing it into the pack and uh, grabbing the dog and his stuff. We're going to go get in the car. See how it's a shuttle mobile. Alrighty, guys. A couple other things, real quick. I've got uh, Chipmunk's Garmin Mini. She's making me take it with her. This is not only a GPS tracker, but a uh, satellite communicator. Uh, so I can actually text her when I'm out on the trail or her me. Even if we don't have cell phone service, we can still say connected. A uh, whole lot of peace of mind. Definitely worth the price of that unit. And I also added some cheapy camp sandals to wear once I get to base camp tonight. So factor that in. And I just, uh, I didn't add everything up. That's a fine way to get an idea. But what I like to do is actually just stand on the old scale with the pack, without the pack. I just did that. My base weight's looking at 11.6, 11 pounds, 6 ounces. Not ultralight yet, but getting there. And uh, add in 2 pounds of food. Almost four and a half pounds of water, and then about four ounces weight wise of fuel. So, not too bad. We're getting there. 